Hi everyone, Joel here again and today what we're looking at is an introduction to Adobe Animate CC. Adobe Animate CC is uh, the program that used to be called uh, Flash Professional. Uh, it's been renamed, rebranded and in almost all respects it's pretty much the same program. Um, there's a couple of little new tweaks here and there and certainly for what we're doing um, today what we could do is easily done on Flash Professional, but I just happen to be using Adobe Animate. So as you can see on the program here, I've got something loaded up um, and it says a Walt, which at our school is our learning outcome, which is we are learning to. We are learning to make a bouncing ball in Adobe Animate CC. And I sort of had this up on the screen for kids to look at as they came in. And if I just loop that and play it, you can see what it is that we're doing. We're making this ball bounce up and down, and that's being looped. And it's got that kind of, I'll stop for a second, it's got that kind of elongated stretch as it comes down, squishes down on the ground, comes back up, uh, stretches down again, comes back up again. Okay, so that's what we're going to be doing. So I have this file, I'll just click onto here and show you, I had this file already prepared. <coughs> and uh, what you're looking at here is four different layers. Um, my first layer, this layer one, is the picture here, uh, which I downloaded off the internet. This is the basic bouncing ball action, and it shows you the different steps that an animator would do in going through a bouncing ball. I have a heading up here, uh, bouncing ball. Uh, I have a names layer here which at the end of the project, the kids will uh, uh, edit that to reflect their own names. And then the ball layer, which is currently blank, which is what we're going to do. So essentially what we're going to do is we're going to draw in each of these balls on a separate frame each. So there are 17 balls, and as you can see, my project here is 17 frames. Uh, down here, you can see the number 17, that's where it finishes. So the program exists, sorry, the, the animation exists for 17 frames. And right now, there's nothing to be seen. So the first thing that I get the kids to do is to save the program, save the file. Um, I'm not going to do it right now, but I just get them to save it in their folder so that they're not all accessing the same file that... Um, once they save it, it's their file and they can edit it as they need to. Okay, so the next step after that is we need to put in keyframes to each of these. Okay, so it's quite simple. The first one's already put in there. So a keyframe is a particular kind of frame where there is an action. Okay, and although this ball layer exists for 17 frames, there's nothing there. So it just has the one keyframe. So I'm just going to right click on this next one here and choose insert keyframe. And I'm going to do it for the next one over here and the next one over here. I'm just going to keep on doing that. So I say to the kids, just make sure that you've got 17 keyframes and uh, make sure that you are choosing the right thing. Don't choose insert frame because that will just extend that layer and the extra frame. That's not what we want. We don't want a blank keyframe either. We want you to make sure that you always choose insert keyframe and you'll be getting this little empty circle as a symbol as you do that. So I'm just going to quickly do that for the rest of it. Okay, I'm done. And uh, don't forget to make sure that your 17th frame also has a keyframe. What that's going to mean is as we draw each circle, there's going to be a separate circle drawn um, on each frame. Okay, so I'm going to click here on frame number one, ready to draw. And I'm going to go to my oval tool here in my tools panel. And I'm going to choose a color. So I'm going to click on here and I'll choose, you know, any color that I want. Uh, I'm going to, I'm, deliberately, I'm going to choose a dark color because I want to change the alpha. Now, the alpha is the transparency. And I do want these balls to have a slight transparency so we can see the image behind, so we can see whether it, what we're doing matches up. So I'll do that first. I'll click on that 100, change that number to 70, and then I'll choose a dark color like this and now I'm ready to draw. So again, making sure I'm on frame number one. Um, I might actually uh, increase the, si the size of this. Right now on my screen it says 100. I'm just going to change that to fit in window so I can see it nice and big. And um, as you're going through a project, if you happen to see your timeline looking something like this, you can extend that and 
zoom it in if you like using this slider here at the bottom just so it's much more easy easily seen okay so frame number one I've got my drawing tool selected so now I'm just going to draw click and drag and draw my circle that's actually pretty well done nothing I need to change about that let's go to number two um, starting on the top corner here and drawing my number two that looks good too number three starting over here that looks good it's there's a little bit left over there but not by a lot uh, number four now here's where it starts to get tricky this is not a perfect circle so what I say to the kids is okay this is more of an egg shape so don't worry about the fact that it's the wrong angle just draw the oval the size that you think it is so I'm just gonna start here and I'm gonna draw the egg about the size I think it is like that then I'm gonna go over here and choose this tool here this is the free transform tool so I'm gonna click on that and then click on the circle again and now I can make some adjustments um, the first thing I'm going to do is go just outside the corner here and rotate it a bit. Now I'll just click off to see how that looks. Not too bad, it needs to be a bit wider. So I'm just going to just drag it a little bit like that. And now see, okay, that's good, but it's too long. So see if I can change that a little bit. It really is a process of um, trial and error, seeing what you can come up with still a bit big might make it smaller and then try moving it up and then skewing it a little bit like that see how that looks that almost looks perfect just needs to be a tad taller just a bit maybe clicking it and using my arrow keys on the keyboard just nudging it there we go that looks pretty good all right let's try number five clicking on the frame I'm um, going to my oval tool and again drawing that oval approximately how I think it might be using my free transform tool clicking it and rotating it and then I'll see what other adjustments I need to do so maybe a little bit thicker clicking it and nudging it a bit with my arrow keys that's too big so we'll need to bring it in a bit still a little tad too big try a bit more that looks okay if we nudge it up a bit Okay, as accurately as possible. And you know, it depends on the students. Some students will um, be very good at this. Some will struggle with it, especially with the younger kids. They can get a little frustrated. Um, it does take a bit of patience. Um, that's not too bad. Now, one of the problems that I have with the students as they're doing this is like I said, if you want to move this, you need to click it and then you need to move it around like that. Now, what some of the students actually do is they forget that step and they, they've got the right tool and they move it and then they try and move it here. Now, look what happens to my arrow as I'm coming towards the circle. It has that curved line. And when I click and when I try and move it, look what happens. It's now, it's now transforming the edge of the shape here, which could be fantastic if that's what you're going for, but it does ruin that sort of ball like that perfect oval thing um, so I, I try to tell them not to do that and look it's it's not easy sometimes they do and sometimes they don't and and perhaps sometimes it is a good idea to stretch it a, a little bit just like that but if I take off that background layer if I just hide that you'll see it, it does have a bit of a bump um, it's not really perfect okay let's go to number six I'll do one more uh, this is more of a flat oval, so I'm going to start here and do the best I can. That's pretty good. All right, make sure the students understand that they have to click on the frame before they start drawing their circle and clicking on the frame and drawing their circle and keeping an eye on what number they're up to. Okay, so this one over here, even though there's no numbers on all, above all these frames, you can see down here this is number seven. So number seven is the one that I have to draw. So I've only done six now, but as I go across, you can see already that my balls are getting there and they're, they're um, uh, taking shape as it were. So I'm going to draw out the rest and I'll come back to you when I'm done. Okay and I'm done so let's have a look at what it looks like. Let's scrub through the timeline by clicking on this red box and dragging it across. So as the kids tell me they're finished I sort of check their work by doing this process and giving them feedback if, if uh, one or more of these balls need a bit of work. 
but all mine look pretty good. Okay, so then I guess the next step is to get rid of this picture. It doesn't really matter if they're not quite exactly the same. Like you can see this number six here goes outside the line a bit, but when you take away the picture, you'd never know. Um, we're just trying to get it done as as close to the picture here as you see. So what I'm going to do is click on layer one over here and I'm going to press the trash can to delete that layer. I'm now going to press the loop button and extend what's called the workspace, extend that for the whole project so it starts and ends here and then press the play button and see how it looks. And that looks really good, very happy with that. Okay, so I'll stop that. And then what I get the kids to do is unlock the, la the names layer here, um, use your text tool and just select that names thing and put in their own names. Like that. Okay. And then once I've done that, um, we're going to go to File, uh, Export, and we're going to export the movie. And I will call this uh, Mr. Aaron's bouncing ball. Press save. So that saved it as an FLA, uh, sorry, as a Swift file, a SWF file, Swift. Um, there are tools on the internet that will uh, convert a Swift file to a video file. So this is what I've done. I'm just going to go to Chrome right now and here you can see this is a website that you can download a program called Swivel which is a program to convert Swift to video. Okay, it's a free program so you download it, you load your Swift in, you convert it to a video and uh, because it, the project, if I go back to it, is only 17 frames, it's obviously going to be very very quick. So I found the easiest thing to do is to, in Swivel, put in my project, you know, my Mr. Aaron's bouncing ball, and then put it in again, and put it in again, and put it again. So there's five instances of that Swift, even though it's the same one, and then press convert, and then it will convert it five times and stitch it together. So it sort of loops five times. So at least there's something um, to see that will take several seconds rather than just one. Okay. So there's my project. I'll press play again. That is how to create a bouncing ball in Adobe Animate CC. There are other ways to do it, but that's the one that I chose to use to introduce my students to Animate CC. Okay, hope you enjoyed that and thanks for listening.